Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Energy MD podcast, where we are on a mission to help people with chronic fatigue, MECFS, long COVID, and now MCAS or mast cell activation syndrome, so that they can live the life that they deserve. So, really excited about today's topic because we're going to be talking about some of the deficiencies that we talk about in our program. We're going to be talking about thyroid with my friend L. So, let's learn a little bit about L. Russ. So she is a number one best-selling author, world-renowned thyroid health expert, and master coach. She is the author of Confident as F-U-C-K and The Paleo Thyroid Solution, a book that has helped thousands of people around the world regain their health. She is also the creator of the most comprehensive thyroid course on the planet, The Ultimate Thyroid Course. I love it. Elle has written for Entrepreneur Magazine and has been featured in Success Magazine, HuffPost, Mind Body Green, Podcasting Magazine, Prevention, and much more. Elle has been coaching people all over the world in a variety of areas for over a decade. She is also the host of The L. Russ Show, a weekly show intended to inspire, motivate, and educate. Elle has been podcasting for eight years with over 500 interviews and 20 million total downloads. Oh my goodness. Elle, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an important topic as people are being diagnosed every day. People are having issues with it every day. We're talking about 200 million people in the world already known with a thyroid problem, mm. 25 plus million Americans, and 60% are unaware that they even have a problem, probably due to misdiagnosis. And then also they just don't know or they think it's something else. So it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, so let's get into some of this. Let's talk first about how someone knows if they have a thyroid problem. Uh, symptoms are obvious. And um, uh, I have a list on my website and in my book of about 40 of them. I had like 30 of the 40 in there. Now, here are the very common ones that come up. Um, the most common would probably be the inability to lose weight. So no matter, no matter what you're doing, you know, you're, you're gaining weight, you're trying to diet, you're exercising, you go keto, nothing's working. But you probably wouldn't just have the weight thing. You would be cold because it affects temperature. So if you're always cold and you know who you are because you're the one that's in summer and needs a sweater and you're always freezing and no one else is freezing, then that's that's it. Um, the other would be things like hair falling out, dry cracked skin on your index finger and also cracked heels. Um, I mean, that's also could be like diabetic signs too. But for the most part, you get like really dry cracked skin horrible constipation. That's a, a common one as well. Overall, absolute exhaustion. I mean, and when I say that, it's like, it takes you three hours to get it together in the morning. You might need a ton of coffee. You're also taking a nap and you're going to bed early. Now there are some scenarios where because of the way that thyroid affects adrenals, there are sometimes people get a resurgence of energy after 6 PM and then they're up all night. Either way, when you correct the thyroid, it all gets corrected. Um, so yeah, so I'll just start there and see see where we want to go. Yeah, that's perfect. And so then people listening to this right now are like, wow, I, I think I have a thyroid problem. And so then they go to their doc, their doctor runs some labs, and the doctor says, nope, you don't have a thyroid problem. So what, what's to wrong me. with that? What's wrong with that situation? Yeah. Happened to me and it happens to everybody. So by the way, whenever I run into anyone in life and they go, oh yeah, no, my doctor tested my thyroid. It's fine. I go, is it? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Is it? <laughs> I don't believe it. Send me the tests. I have yet to be wrong on this. And that bothers me because it shouldn't be right, which is I'll say, uh, show me the test. They didn't take the right tests. They didn't comprehensively test it. And therefore the person is still suffering because the doctor completely missed it. So now the doctor goes, oh, well, you have depression. We'll give you Prozac. That'll last three months. And then it won't work because you didn't get to the root of the problem. Down the rabbit hole we go. Now you're getting patched up like a freaking quilt. And no one's ever getting to the root of the problem. And it starts with the 99% of doctors, unfortunately, no offense to your MD, are uninformed on thyroid. And so they are taking tests from 1973. I was born in 1973. That's 49 years ago. Okay. So, you know, um, so yeah, so that's what happens. So then the, the patient, just like me, I had a doctor test my thyroid the wrong way. I was bloated. I'm like, I'm gaining weight. All these things happen. My hair's falling out. And he tapped my gym shoes in the office. He goes, just eat less and use those more. So you get accused of having a secret eating problem. You get accused, mm -hmm. they, they accuse of these things. 
in looking now, by the way, that doctor kept me sick for a long time. I was having bleeding issues. Gynecological issues are very prominent, by the way. That's another symptom. Again, you know, I, I could list a thousand, but that's that's a big one. Um, I want to talk about the mental effects in a minute because it affects our brain in terrible ways. Um, but yeah, so so aside from things like being sensitive to light, sound, and smells, that's usually related to adrenals, so that can happen. Um so anyway, you you go in, you get tested, and then they're they're discounting you, or, or let's say you have a hormonal issue. You're like, oh, I uh, my low progesterone, low testosterone. They test the thyroid incorrectly, give you the hormone replacement therapy. They haven't solved the problem. The thyroid is critical in the production and regulation of your sex hormones. So I'll give an example. There was a 25 year old guy who came to me. He had uh, really low testosterone. Now a 25 year old guy should not have low testosterone. That is extremely rare. So what did the doctor do? He, instead of going, well, why do you have low testosterone? See, no one asked why had he just tested this guy's thyroid, he would realize they had a horrible reverse T3 hypothyroid situation. That's what needed to be corrected in order to correct the testosterone. So what happened was the doctors gave him testosterone, nothing worked, nothing got better. He came to me. I was like, you don't have a testosterone issue. You have a thyroid issue. We get the thyroid issue, right? You get off the testosterone, your testosterone comes back, which is exactly what happened. So you could be in your thirties as a woman, be having hormonal imbalances and think it was a hormonal imbalance. I did too. I was bleeding all the time. I was having periods when I shouldn't. So, you know, you think, oh, my hormones are off. It's the thyroid. Like nine times out of 10, it comes from there. So I had a doctor give me progesterone. I was 30. You know, I had a doctor do this, do that. And then it turned out, you know, I was just getting tested incorrectly by all of these doctors. And then I finally took my health into my own hands. The reason I became a thyroid expert is because no doctor would help me. And I live in Los Angeles. I went to expensive hormone doctors that like were on the back of Suzanne Summers books and Beverly Hills and they charged $700 and like, that was it, you know? And so I finally did the research myself and I actually dosed myself back to health. I had to be my own doctor. That shouldn't happen. I had great insurance. I had a PPO. I live in Los Angeles, the best doctors like in, one, in the world, some of them. And, you know, this is what goes on. So it's really about incorrect testing. There's a couple things that go wrong. They're testing it incorrectly. So they're not even seeing the problem or they're testing incorrectly. They see a problem where there's no problem. That happens too. They test correctly. They don't know how to assess it correctly. Okay. Or they test correctly. They assess correctly. They don't know how to treat correctly. So, so many things can happen at all of these stages. Like I've met, you know, clients, doctors who like got like three fourths of it, right. You know what I mean? But then like couldn't treat it. Um, and so, so this is the problem it's, and that is why if you think you have a thyroid problem, you need to educate yourself. I also put my health into the hands of a doctor. I was like, they know, I don't know. So when he tapped my gym shoes or was like, whatever, I was like, I guess I don't have a thyroid problem. I guess it's a hormonal problem or it wasn't. And I went through horrible bleeding. I had to go through getting a polyp removed from my uterus and a fibroid that was there. And I mean, all of that, from, from just getting misdiagnosed because doctors don't know the right test to take because they are steeped in 1970 um, outdated ways of testing and treating. Yeah, so let's talk about the correct testing. Let's do that. Um, I don't know if it would benefit everyone if I described the thyroid feedback loop correctly before going into testing. I'm sure. open. So I... I you know, first of all, for everyone listening, this might sound confusing to you. Just know I was terrible at math and science as a kid. Okay. I hated it. So, so I'm going to explain it to you in ways you'll understand. And even though I'm saying things like T4, T3, don't worry, you'll get it. So the thyroid loop feedback loop is, it's an amazing, it's really an elegant, amazing system. And it's got all these built-in ways to sort of protect you and help you throughout your life. And I'll explain why. So thyroid hormones, or particularly just the biologically active thyroid hormone T3 is the thing that makes you feel good or don't. If it's too high, you have hyperthyroidism, you got a problem. If it's too low, you have hypothyroidism. But T3 is the only biologically active hormone. Here's the thing though, it's really potent. It's kind of like gasoline. So our bodies have sort of a slow release mechanism in a way you could envision it, by which it has a storage hormone called T4. And T4's job is to convert into T3, the active one, throughout the day as you need it. You know, so let's say you're a normal person, your thyroid's working fine, you wake up, you have coffee, you go to the gym. After the gym, this is what'll happen. The brain, the pituitary at the base of the brain will sense 
that your body's low in thyroid hormones. And it'll go, hey, yo, wake up. That signal that is being sent from the brain to the thyroid is called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Here's the problem. If you are out there and your doctor has only tested your TSH, you are with one of the most uninformed doctors of the history of doctors. Okay. <laughs> so, and here, and uh, you'll understand why, but so what they're doing, so TSH is usually the test and that's the bane of every thyroid patient's existence because if a doctor's only testing TSH and you'll get this by the end, they're missing it. So TSH is not a thyroid hormone. It is just a signal. It's a wake up call from the brain to the thyroid to get moving. Now, when the thyroid's working great, the thyroid says, thank you for the message and the wake up call. Now I'm going to pump out about 80% of this thing called T4. That's like a storage hormone. These are rough percentages, by the way, but this is kind of what has been assessed. So let's say like 80 percent uh, 80 to 90 percent of t4 and then your body will also release some of the direct biologically active hormone t3 but like 9 to 20 percent so let's just say 80 20 okay so the thyroid releases these hormones throughout the day the t4 will build up and it will convert as you need it so again like you've exercised you just took a five mile run you maybe you're depleted the body will go hey great produce more t4 so it, throughout the day it converts into the thing as needed now Whatever is not converted from T4 to T3 gets flushed out. Kind of, well, that's the way we just way to look at it. Gets flushed out through a mechanism called reverse T3. So we have TSH, T4, T3, reverse T3. These are kind of the main four things to think about when you're looking at this. So again, your body senses your low in thyroid hormones. The brain sends the TSH signal to the thyroid. The thyroid pumps out a bunch of T4, a little T3. Throughout the day, the T4 converts like a slow release mechanism into the powerful stuff. That's the fat burning stuff that makes your brain work, makes your hair right, like all the things. Now, whatever's not used flushes out. What's reverse T3? It's just the inactive form of T3. Why is it there? If, if T3 is the only biologically active thyroid hormone that we need to live really, because T4 is useless unless it converts into that thing, then why do we need this middleman of T4? Like, what's the point? It is really a protective mechanism. So, for example, reverse T3 is there as an emergency break. I'm going to give an example of someone. Let's say you are stranded on an island, okay? You got no food, maybe. Maybe there aren't fish. All the fauna is gone, and you're starving, okay? Or you're starving yourself because you're anorexic and you're working out too much. Either way, the primal perspective of the body is, oh my God, she's starving. Let's dial it back. We don't want to give her any more of this fat burning T3. We're going to dial back the T4 by converting it into the inactive form. Okay. Because she didn't have food. She's not a nutrition, right? So when an emergency happens, for example, they test reverse T3 in the ICU because reverse T3 is really a good general marker of wellness and unwellness in the body. And so when you have, um, okay, so let's say you got into like a horrible accident. Okay. Uh, it, you got limbs broken, all this kind of stuff. You know, the thyroid feedback loop also might dial it back. Or if you have a flu or really sickness or cancer, your reverse T3 might be driven up. If you're under serious stress in life, you can get a reverse T3 thyroid problem without ever being on thyroid hormones or ever having a thyroid issue. The signals we send to our bodies are... Our bodies are always trying to save us. And that's what this thyroid feedback loop is. Now, here's the problem though. When you get tested, you need to test the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, but you also need to test free T3 and free T4. Most uninformed endocrinologists and doctors only test TSH and T4. So let me explain why that is dum-dums. Because they're testing, T so some of them only test TSH. So they're only testing the signal. Did the package get delivered? If you order something from Amazon, it doesn't show up. You don't keep ordering it. You look at the tracking. So the doctors that are dum-dums are out there. They're, they're looking and they're just looking at the TSH. It's a 1973 test. They're just outdated stuff. They're only looking at the signal. They're not seeing, is the T4 converting to the T3? Or some endocrinologists will test TSH and T4, just those two. Again, you can't get the picture from there because is the T4 converting into the thing that matters, which is T3, and how much of it, what are the levels? So people have remained sick, gone through miscarriage, and all sorts of horrible things because a doctor is only testing the TSH and T4. So I can always bet on it when I talk to a client and they've been sick for a long time. I'm like, go back to 
your paperwork. I bet your doctor only tested these one or two things. So it's important that we test the TSH, the free T4, the free T3. Now, there are other tests like total T3 and just T4. Kind of don't care at this point, and I'll tell you why. Free T4, free T3 means what's free, unbound, and available, and it really corresponds with how you're feeling. It's not that you couldn't take a total T3 test, but the main four that you want to get to go, do I or do I not have some thyroid effery going on, that would be TSH, free T4, free T3, and reverse T3. You can't miss reverse T3 because if you missed it, and you did have a thyroid problem with the other three tests, the doctor would put you on a medication that would make the reverse T3 worse because most of them would give you T4. And here's the thing to know. T4 is the only thing that converts into the reverse inactive T3. And T3 doesn't. So that is why it's critical that free T3 also always get tested in reverse T3. Now, most doctors will balk at the reverse T3. They won't test it because they don't know what it is. They're ego ridden, afraid of it. Uh, I'll tell a story. I took a, a woman who used to work for our company who didn't speak English very well. I, I knew, I just knew she had been on T4 only treatment for many years. She was fat, bloated, high blood pressure, depression. I mean, all the symptoms. And I figured... She's got a reverse T3 problem, I'm pretty sure of it. So I went to her endocrinologist with her. The endocrinologist was so mean. I mean, didn't even ask her anything about herself or how she felt or even looked at her. And I said to this endocrinologist, I said, look, I, I, I'm concerned about your patient here. Can you please just test reverse T3? And she goes, that's old school. We don't do that. And I said, well, you know, it's really funny you said that because I myself just got over a reverse T3 issue. And so it's pretty new school to me. Then she says, well, fine, I'll test it, but I don't know how to evaluate it. Okay, we need to stop right there. That's the problem. Do you see what she just did there? She just patron, and I said to her, I go, did you just patronizing me for asking you about a test that you are telling me now you know nothing about? This is a problem because where is the patient here? That is ego. Notice how she drops so quickly. Well, fine, but I don't know what it is. That would literally be like me saying to you, do not go see the new Transformers movie. And you're like, oh God, was it bad? And I go, I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> that, that's literally what that is. Right. This is crazy making stuff when you're dealing with these kind of people. So finally, I'm like, can you just take a test? She did. Again, I was right. Again, I'm not in the business of being right. I don't want to be right in these situations, but she did. She had a horrible, horrible reverse T3 problem. Now the endocrinologist has no idea what in the world to do there. So, so TSH sends a signal. Your thyroid releases T4 and T3. The T4 converts into the T3 as needed. Whatever's not needed of the storage hormone T4 gets flushed out through a reverse T3. Elegant system. If there is there are conversion problems from T4 to T3, there's lots of things that can happen within this feedback loop, but those are the four main tests. Now, I also, if you're first getting tested for the very first time, it's important to rule out the autoimmune form of hypothyroidism, which is Hashimoto's. And there are two antibody tests for that. Most doctors only know about one and only test one. You can be positive for one and not the other. You have to rule them out. And those two tests are TPO antibody, thyroid peroxidase antibody, and TG antibody, thyroglobulin antibody. So we got a main six. Do I have a thyroid problem? You wake up, black coffee, water, or tea, uh, no food, no supplements, no medication, and you go into the lab within a couple hours of waking up and you get TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, the TPO antibody, and the TG antibody. Now, I have a free thyroid guide in my masterclass that lists them all. And then there's some other tests you should get to, like a comprehensive iron panel, because hypothyroid people can't hold on to iron. Vitamin D, often they're low in vitamin D. Yes, you know all of these, you know, extra B12, like, sure. But if you're just like, do all or do I not have a problem? Those are the blood tests. However, you can also assess this via temperature because thyroid is completely regulates our temperature and our heart rate. So in the morning, our basal temperature, and when you guys are out there, a lot of people don't even know really how to test basal. When you test basal temperature, it's like you have the the thermometer next to the bed. You don't even get up to pee in the morning. You don't sit up in bed. You don't even pull the covers off. You just reach over, you stick the thermometer on your tongue. 
that's your basal. The basal should be between 97.7 and 98.2. Some would say 97.8, sorry, 97.8 uh, to 98.3, whatever. Let's just say 97.7 and 98.2. Most hypothyroid people are well below 97.7. When I was hypothyroid, my temperature didn't give above 96 degrees, even in the afternoon in California during the summer. So, so you're going to be cold. You are going to be below 97.7. That's an indicator. Now I'm not saying you would treat hypothyroidism without getting blood tests, but if you don't have the money right now, or you just want to see at home, then if you do five days of basal in the afternoon, you're going to get an idea. Now in the afternoon, when we take our temps, we're talking three, three 30, if you're the person that wakes up seven, eight AM kind of thing. And you just want to make sure you're not, you know, you didn't just run a marathon, smoke a cigarette, drink alcohol, take a hot shower, you know, like any of those things, you're just sitting, you're chilling, you haven't done anything for a while, you're just sitting there. That's when you take your afternoon temp. Now, this can vary between people, but we are humans, Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, and we're looking at 98.6. If you're 98.4, is that a problem? Not necessarily, but you look at the full picture of it. So we can really diagnose in a lot of ways, or preliminarily, thyroid and also adrenal insufficiency, that's a whole other conversation, through looking at temps and the way that they work. Now, Past ovulation, your temps will increase a bit. So it's kind of better to get maybe in that first couple of weeks, you know, the, the five days of uh, basal and afternoon because they will rise after that. But th those are th that's one way to test it. And um, it's also one way for people who are on thyroid hormone medication, like, like me, if I sense that something's off for some reason, like I'm on too much or I'm on too little, I would actually go right to temps. And then I would go get a blood test to maybe confirm it, but I would go right to temps. And at this point in my life, I would probably be able to gauge correctly. Now, we're not, you're not dosing yourself to hit 98.6, but again, just looking at averages here. Um, so those are two ways to look at like, do I have a thyroid problem? And then once you assess whether you do, what are you looking at in those tests? Well, this is a long discussion, but I'll just give everyone the quick pointer, which is your free T3 result, if you are a normal human being in this world and you're not a pro athlete with a ripped body and 10% body fat, because they're going to have a little bit lower, your free T3 would be and a range of 2.0 to 4.0 in the United States, 3.1. I bet if we tested your thyroid, I don't know if you have your thyroid results, but I bet if you don't take thyroid medication, um, I'm assuming that yours would be that way too. So most normal people that I know, my brother, whatever, they will have their TSH in the middle of the range, roughly, maybe 2.0, whatever. They will have their free T3 at 3.1 in a range of 2.0 to 4.0, and their free T4 will be at about 1.31. That's kind of like standard. So if a doctor sees that it's even within the range, you'll get discounted, but it's not optimal. So you want to be at least, if you're not on thyroid hormone medication, you're out in this world, you want to be in the middle of the range on free T3, but you could be discounted if you're at 2.8 and 3.1 is safe. So then a doctor will kind of discount you, go, oh, it's close enough kind of thing. But you can even be discounted if it's 2.2. Now, there is a caveat here. I mentioned the ripped bodybuilder types. Like if you are a pro athlete, you have really lean body, you are metabolically efficient, you're just one of these beasts out there, they are going to have a lower free T3. It's something that I coined T3 efficiency because they're so metabolically efficient, so calorically efficient that they actually need less to operate on and they don't have hypo symptoms. I mean, that's the key. If anyone is suspicious of your labs, but you've never had a hypo symptom in your life, are you fine? You know, now there are some people where I'll dig deeper. Like I had a um, client, some people bring their children to me, you know, because they've got kids who have hypothyroidism. And one of the, the kids, she was like a teenager and her mom was like, you sleep a lot, like you're tired, like you take a lot of nap. You know, I mean, she was kind of telling me about her energy levels. And the teenager goes, she's like, well, I just, I just like sleeping. Yeah, uh, that is a hypothyroid statement because the energy, you just want to sleep and you can't imagine having energy and it's just something you want to do and it feels so good and you just love it that you can't imagine not loving it kind of thing. It's almost like when I used to be a smoker back in the day, just the thought of ever even not wanting it and quitting seemed weird. I know that's, and I'm sure people who have obesity and, and, and eating disorder, same thing. It's like, you're like, no, I don't want to eat less food. I want to eat more food than I'm eating now. And I don't want to, don't tell me I, I'm going to do a diet where I'll, I'll eventually want less food. Like that sounds great to a lot of people, but some people that sounds like horrible, right? So I, I get this, uh, the sort of like the way that people look at it.
So anyway, I'm going to stop there and see what I could clear up or expand, expand on. That was excellent. So, um, so then to review, you said free T4, you like it above 1.31. Well, no, normal or... people would have it about 1.31 in a U.S. range of 0. 0.77, 0. 0.8 to uh, 1.7. And it would be about 1.3, sorry, yeah, 1.31. And the free T3 on a range of 2.0 to 4.0 would be 3.1. So they're kind of like, or two, and it depends, like in Canada, the range is like three to six. Well, then we look at the middle of the range there. Now, where you assess your labs when you're on thyroid hormone replacement, completely different story. But if you're not on thyroid hormones and you're just out there in this world, that's where your labs should roughly be. That mm -hmm. is average. And if they're not, and you have symptoms, yeah. Yeah. You need to investigate a little bit further. And listen, I mean, the paleothyroid solution is, it's not about, uh, oh, you got fat with hypothyroidism, go paleo, lose weight. That's part of it. But it's also because the, the principles of paleo primal nutrition are most aligned with our adrenals and most aligned with our, you know, blood glucose. And those things do have a factor, are not important, synergistic with thyroid. So, you know, it all works together. Okay. That's helpful. And then, so then TSH, did you say 2.0? Well, on the, the, the standard range in the States for TSH is like 0.45 to 5.0. Now here's the thing to be wary of though. The doctors that only test TSH, this is, this is, I've had this happen to me a couple of times. Someone has woke, they're fine. They have no symptoms. They wake up in the morning, they go to the gym and then they go get their blood tested for their annual paper, their annual, whatever. And the doctor sees that the TSH has gone to like 3.5, maybe the top of the range is five or 4.5. And they go, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. This is again, really dumb. Based on what I just said, you understand he just worked out the brain. It's just the brain asking for more. However, the top of that range is usually five for TSH. When you see people that are horribly suffering, that have almost zero T4, zero T3, I mean, how are they alive kind of labs, they will have a TSH of like 150 if the top of the range is five. So when you see something like eight, 10, one, you know, or 150, one, you know what that 150 is? That 150 will always correspond. Something that high for a TSH will always correspond with an extremely low T3 and T4. Why do you... Based on what I said, the brain is screaming, screaming. You're empty. You got nothing. They got nothing. Please wake up, wake up. And that wake up is 120 versus like an eight or a five or whatever. So, so many people, even Mark Sisson, who was my mentor and the creator of uh, the Primal Blueprint and Primal Kitchen Foods, uh, he has happened to him a couple of times. Even Brad Kearns is New York Times bestselling co-writer. They would go get the wake up, work out, go get fast, go to take the blood work. And the doctor was like, I'm concerned you have a thyroid problem. And they were like, we've never, I've never had a thyroid problem in my life. And then they give me their labs. No free T4, no free T3, no reverse T3. People are actually given thyroid medication based on a TSH test that should never happen. It's borderline malpractice. It's extremely irresponsible. You are not looking at the full picture and you can hurt somebody. Well, and even, you know, I learned in conventional medical school that diagnosis is really made by history and symptoms 90% of the time. And then labs and physical exam are 10%. And so once again, it's, a, you know, an example of leaning too heavy on your labs because if somebody's, you know, regardless of what their labs look like, if they've got low thyroid symptoms, you have to consider fixing their thyroid. Same with higher. So there'll be people that are on thyroid hormone replacement and their free T3 might be at the top of the range, or they might need to be a little bit over. And then a doctor again will do the same thing, but the other way, they will mistakenly be like, oh my God, this person is hyperthyroid. They're not. Okay. Hyperthyroidism is not a lab. It also goes along with a lot of symptoms. I've been hyper before. I have been on too much T3. I totally understand what this feels like. Both ways are extremely uncomfortable. They both ruin your, let me tell you how it ruins your metabolism and your energy. People think of hyperthyroidism because T3 is an energy hormone. It gives us an energy. That's why you're always exhausted and brain fog. And oh, I want to talk about the mental aspects of it because this one is really important for everyone listening to know. One of the scariest things that happens with hypothyroidism is what happens to your brain. And this is hard to express to people because it's this like secret quiet in your brain place that you're thinking about yourself. And it's hard to go, 
I think I'm getting dumb over here. I think my brain's not working right. It's it's a weird thing. Here's what happens. We have more receptors in our brain than a lot of other places for T3. So this is what happens. You'll have messy handwriting. You'll have brain to hand dexterity issues. You might be very athletic and coordinated, but all of a sudden you're bumping into stuff and you're just like, what is wrong with me? That kind of thing. Um, a hand-eye coordination, and then also general malaise. I mean, hypothyroidism does bring about depression, but what it will really manifest itself as, it's kind of like a precursor to probably like some suicidal thoughts where you're like, you, you kind of like you were passionate about stuff before and now you're like, why bother? You know, kind of like this, what's it all mean anyway? I don't want to do that shit. I don't fucking care. I don't even care anymore about the stuff that used to excite me. Like you really don't even care. It's not that you care that you don't care. You're just, you, cause it's so inherently feels like I just, and so aside from taking naps and being tired and puffy face, puffy eyes and all these other symptoms, the brain stuff is, so here's the other way it affects the brain. Um, if I were to go off my, my thyroid hormones tomorrow, um, I bet you that a few days from now, I would start like slurring my words a bit. Now I'm already a fast talker, so I'm bound to jumble a few things, but I'm also very articulate. And so I would not only slur my words, okay, sort of like a drunk person, and I don't drink, um, but then I would also not be able to find them. So what you'll find is you'll, you're speaking dyslexically. <laughs> Yet words are jumbled. You're not getting them out right. You can't find the word. There was a success story in my book. She quit her, people quit their jobs. She was in numbers and accounting. She couldn't remember anything. Sometimes you can't even remember your own address. I mean, it is bad. The other part that people talk about is brain fog. Now, everybody in the world knows what brain fog is, except for that the only difference between the brain fog that people feel in the world, it's usually with a cold. Everyone has had a really horrible sinus bad cold where you're just blowing your nose all day. That worst day of it where you're staring into space, nothing's fun. You don't want to do anything and nothing, you know, it's just, it's like, uh, you're just brain dead. That is what it is with hypothyroidism without the stuffiness. You can get into accidents. Do you know what I mean? Um, you forget so many things. And then also you become a huge party pooper. You don't want to go out. You're exhausted all the time. You don't know what's wrong with you because you've been to 50 doctors that are all uninformed. Hi, that was me. I went to over two dozen endocrinologists and doctors in Los Angeles. Nobody could help mm -hmm. me. I was left in the dust. That's still happening or else I wouldn't even have a career. Do you know what I mean? And so- so these are this is the cascade of things that kind of go down, but the mental stuff is scary. And I was describing this like I am to you now. A couple of years ago, I had a friend over and I said, I'm sorry, I, I have this podcast though. She's like, oh, I'll just be on my phone over here. I get off the podcast, I turn to her and she's crying. This is a friend of mine I've been friends with for eight years. I never heard about hypo symptoms. She knew all about my hypo thing. I, I And she said, you just described how I feel in my brain. And I was like, oh my God, I never thought we should get you tested for thyroid. Oh, she has Hashimoto's. I, you know, I, I mean, this is like, I had, we had no idea. I thought that she, she kind of was a little narcoleptic sometimes. She would like fall asleep, you know, not, not like instantly, but she was always like, never could go through a movie. And she was always kind of like, there were some low energy things happening, but I just never chalked it up because she never complained. And then she heard me talk about the mental stuff and that got her. So that's why I want to bring that up because it's the scary thing that people don't know how to say. Thank you. Yeah, that's important. So then just so I'm clear about the the labs. So in terms of mm -hmm. optimal ranges, it sounds sure. like you were talking about kind of like normal. How does the optimal yeah. range for like free T4, free T3, TSH, what are you looking at there? Well, those are all those are all optimal for normal human beings. So TSH would roughly TSH again, not we don't care about it so much because it's mm -hmm. gonna have the other tests with it. So we assess it all together. But um the TSH again between four point point four five and five point oh, it should be 2.0-ish or 2.5, somewhere in the middle of the range. Gotcha. Free T3, uh, again, the range is usually 0.80 to 1.8. It should be about 1.31. That's again, these are for normal people, not on thyroid hormone who are doing great. And then the free T3 should also be in the middle of the range. So in a range of 2.0 to 4.0, we're looking at about 3.0, 3.1 something like that. Thank that you. is the classic profile. And in my book, I have my brother's thyroid labs. He's he's a few years older than me. He's extremely you know, optimized physically. He's healthy. He's got no issues. And you often see the exact same labs like Mark's sister. You know, any one of these people that are just fit and healthy and doing well, 
That's what the labs will look like. So again, that would be optimal for someone who is not on thyroid hormone replacement. Um, and if you are a normal person out in this world and you've got some symptoms and those labs look different than what I just said, and they're lower than that, not necessarily the TSH. Uh, this is why the TSH is not the the, the uh, measurement we go by. So for example, I had, I don't know how I got hypothyroidism, okay? Like it doesn't run in my family. I don't have Hashimoto's. Could it be that I was a smoker for many years? I don't know. Could it be that I overworked and underate myself into it? Possibly. Um, I was on a low carb, low fat diet way back then before anyone knew anything about stuff and it was just terrible. Um, probably over exercising. And I had the labs of what we call euthyroid six syndrome, which essentially is starving. So you will see with people that have overdone it, whether it's like you're in a bikini body competition or you're just, you know, like I was just an actress trying to have the right body for the roles and all that stuff back then. So that's kind of like how that will go. Okay. And then what about reverse T3? What do you like to see for numbers? Yeah. So reverse T3, usually the range is somewhere between like eight and 30 or nine and 34 or something like that. So let's just go eight to 30. What you're looking for is for it to be at the lower part of the range, but you have, there's a caveat here. Did you just have COVID and you got tested two weeks later? Your reverse T3 might be elevated. Did you just go through a flu, cancer? Okay, so we have to look at that stuff. Um, what we still do, some people do it, some people don't, I still do it. I do. You do a ratio between the free T3 results and the reverse T3 result. There's an online calculator. You can just go online, reverse T3 calculator. You put in the units of measurement. If you're from a different country or you had tests in different places, you got to do math to figure out what the, the values are. But basically, you do a ratio. The result of 20 and higher is ideal. Does that mean if someone has a reverse T3 to free T3 ratio of 17, they have a problem? No, 15 and higher as a ratio, could, as a ratio number could be okay if you have no issues. But let's say you did have 17 and you were kind of suffering a little bit. Well, you know what? Maybe that would be a take some selenium to help with conversion, do some other things to support the thyroid. Maybe you need to change thyroid hormone replacement up if you're on it. Um, but you are looking at pretty low. Now, when I had a reverse T3 problem, my reverse T3 in and of itself was 30, like 32 or so. It was, it's the very, very high end of the range. So what happens when reverse T3 gets really high? That means the T4 is over converting, not into the thing that matters, the life-giving T3. It's over converting into the protective emergency break mechanism, and it's flushing into reverse T3. What causes this? Look, there's nutrient deficiencies, life stuff, stress, all that stuff. And there's also just a genetic component of the inability to convert. So one of my fellow authors, I only suggest two other thyroid authors. One is Janie Bullthorpe and the other is Paul Robinson. Paul Robinson suffered for, oh my God, so many years because he had a thyroid problem, but they kept giving him T4 and they did all these tests and they did all this thing. Nothing ever worked. Finally, the only thing that helped him was to go on T3 only, which is pretty much what I'm on. So he just takes T3. He has gotten rid of the middleman entirely. He doesn't care if T4 is there to store and convert and whatever, out of there. And it solves the reverse T3 problem because T4 is the only thing that converts into reverse T3, not T3. So what happens when you have a reverse T3 problem? It's horrible hypothyroidism. Because you can imagine it like, I, I, I do a diagram in my book. It's a metaphor, but you can't imagine like there's a guard standing in front of the cell, not letting T3 in. And it takes a while. It could take like eight to 12 weeks to really kind of, we say, clear the receptors. I mean, again, these are all metaphors to help people understand it. Um, it's not like you wake up after 12 weeks of T3 only. And you're like, oh my God, my... <laughs> Whew, I feel my receptors are clear. It's just that things can really get much better and healthier beyond that time. It takes some time for this to happen. So I have had hypothyroidism. Um, so what does that mean? When you have a reverse T3 problem that is unresolvable, some of them are resolvable, but when you have one that's unresolvable, you, you really can't take T4 because you're taking the thing that's converting into the thing that doesn't matter. It's just converting into more reverse T3. Back to why I said, if a doctor tests TSH, free T3, free T4, they've gotten some of the picture. But if they test that and they go, oh, you're hypothyroid and give you medication, they'll give you T4 or T4, T3 combo. And now you've got a problem. They're going to make the reverse T3 problem worse because they're giving you the thing that caused it. 
So that is why you always rule out reverse T3. Um, and some doctors just say some really dumb stuff like, oh, well, you just need more of this. And you're like, more of that is going to drive me further into a problem. So I'm one of the only authors out there that had a reverse teeth problem. What Paul Robinson discovered, we have two enzymes. They're like diodinase. I don't even know if that's the correct pronunciation, diodinase, um, one and two. Now, they didn't have tests for this back then, but Paul Robinson suspected that perhaps he had a genetic inability to convert T4 to T3 somehow because of these enzymes. Well, later on in life, many years after writing a book and doing all this stuff, I don't know, maybe he's 65 now or something. He went and got a genetic test. I mean, I think this was like $600 from just figure this out for the D1 and D2. Turns out, made perfect sense. His whole life made sense. So the whole time, these endocrinologists were like, here's T4. Well, let's try some T4. We'll try this different T4. We'll try this different brand of T4. He could never convert the T4 to T3. You need mm-hmm. things to happen to do that. So if you're not converting, Look, I've been on T3 only for more than like 13 years. It's the last resort choice for thyroid hormone replacement. It's not ideal, okay? But it is the only answer for the people that cannot resolve a conversion issue. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 all we have. We'd be dead without it. If we only had T4 in this world, I'd be dead by now. So that is why reverse T3 is important. We need to see where it's at. Why? Let's say you're not on any thyroid hormone replacement. You go to the doctor, you're feeling happy. You got like 30 symptoms. You go in, they test you and they're like, oh my God, this is terrible, right? And let's say you do test reverse T3 and they're like, oh my God, you have a reverse T3 problem. In that case, that would absolutely dictate the levels and dosages of thyroid hormones for that person. And you would probably want to put them on a little bit of T4, mostly T3 at first. You know, you could do T4, T3 combo, but you might need to adjust those levels. And so knowing that is, uh, it's critical. It's critical. Okay. I had one, I had one client in Hawaii and they said, my doctor said that they don't test reverse T3. I said, go back and push them on it. And they went back and pushed on it. She goes, well, it's like, we only test that if you're in the ICU. And I was like, doesn't that in and of itself say how important the reverse T3 test? I mean, can we just talk about that? Like, if they're testing that in the ICU, how about we test it before, before we get to the freaking ICU, man? I mean, there's a reason they're testing it in the intensive care unit when you're about to die, right? That's an important test. And again, for so many reasons, because it could indicate heart failure. I mean, there's, there's so many things that reverse T3... Look, I have a friend right now who is going through a bad injury, a lot of stress at work over the past year. They never took thyroid hormones, never had a thyroid symptom in their life. They have a reverse T3 problem right now. It's just from stress. You know what I mean? So in that case, sure, you can treat the adrenals, you treat the stress stuff, but again, you can get a dial it back reverse T3 problem without taking any T4. It could be doing it with the the T4 that your own thyroid is pumping out. So we have to look at all these components because is it converting? Are you getting the package? The package that matters is T3. Let me tell you something. I've lived with almost zero T4 in my body for a long time. I also, when you're on thyroid hormone replacement, this is specifically for people on T4, T3, or T3 only, your TSH will be like 0.01. Nothing wrong with that. Um, This is another problem though uh, with thyroid hormone patients when doctors are afraid of a suppressed TSH if they're on T4, T3, or T3 only. Um, I can get into why that's a false fear, but so, so basically why does the signal, why is the signal zero? Because I'm getting enough direct T3 in my blood and it's fast acting. Like I said, it's gasoline. That's why we got like the, it kind of peaks and dissipates within four hours. It's not like it completely disappears, but it's volatile, which is why that T4 is there as a nice, like, you know, store and convert, store and convert. It's doing it for you. When you're taking T3 directly like me, it's it's a it's a completely different ball game. It's more of a pain in the ass. We are removing the middleman of conversion, but then there's a problem because I'm a human being and we've got human minds and how am I supposed to tell what I cellularly need? I mean, I can, there's a process by which, you know, I coach people, we go through, I do it myself. It is better. The most ideal thyroid hormone replacement for almost anyone suffering with hypothyroidism that needs it is a T4, T3 combo, exactly how our bodies do it. The problem with the treatment is that most doctors and endocrinologists 
will only give T4. And I'll tell you why. In the late 1800s, there was this brilliant English physician. People had goiters, which is like enlarged thyroid glands, like on their necks. And he did something genius. He extracted sheep thyroid gland and injected it to humans, and they got better. Thus was born natural desiccated thyroid. We call it NDT. So it comes from pigs now, not sheep. All right. The ratios are kind of similar to ours in the way that our thyroids dispense. People were using it forever and ever until the 1950s when drunk companies could not patent natural desiccated thyroid. Then they came up with Synthroid. And when they came up with Synthroid, which is T4 only, just one thyroid hormone, just the storage hormone, they started to put out a bunch of propaganda for NDT. Oh, it's unstable. It's this, it's from pigs, not for humans. So people then got switched to T4 and then like weren't doing well. Then about 15, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, probably, people started to get back in the game. You got like more natural alternative integrative doctors coming out there. They go back to the old school, the old school, you know, non-patented like NDT. 80 year olds were like getting out of their wheelchair. Like, you know what I mean? People were getting better. And then this really became a thing. So if you've got a doctor whose only solution, their first solution is to just give you T4 only. And this is also the reason why T4 only therapy often fails people. It's not even true endocrine mimicry. It's just not. And then for the person that Let's say they go in and they have a thyroid problem. The doctor's just looking at their TSH and T4. Maybe the TSH is 120. Maybe their T4 is really low. So the doctor's like, oh my God, you need thyroid hormone. But they give that patient T4. How do they know that's the right thing unless they tested the reverse T3? So now they're hurting the patient unless they had could easily have prevented it by just taking a test. Because if the reverse T3 was high in that situation, the first order of business would not be to give someone T4 only therapy again. T4 being the only thing that converts into reverse T3, not T3 only. So, so, so then what happens? I know that's a lot. What happens when that conversion happens? What happens in the body, or how do how do people experience that when it's going you when you're converting that T4 to reverse T3? Um, the so when you have a reverse T3 problem, it is reverse. It's just hypothyroidism. So you can have it when you're on thyroid hormone medication. So I was on a T4, T3 combo. I was on natural desiccated thyroid. The major US brands are Nature, Throid, Armor, and Piacella. I had been on Armor. I was doing great for a couple of years. Then I started to get these hypo symptoms. But see, at the time, I didn't think, I was like, this, I take thyroid. I already, I already went through that. <laughs> I already did that thing with thyroid. I figured that out. So I was like, what? but I had all these crazy hypo symptoms. And one of the things that really did it that I was like, uh oh, was I had dry scaly crack skin on the inside of my index finger. It's such a random one. I don't know why it's always the right hand. Even if you're left-handed, it just, just happens. So it's a weird thing. And I remember this and knew that. And I, my doctor didn't know at the time, didn't know what was going on. I reached out to Janie Bullthorpe, uh, who wrote Stop the Thyroid Madness. She did not have the website then yet. Um, but she, I, I reached out to her. I'm like, what's happening to me? Like da, da, da. She goes, I think you have what we sort of just learned about called the reverse T3 problem. And there's a guy out of England named Paul Robinson who wrote a book called recovering with T3. You should get it. That saved my life, saved my life. I mean, I could just cry right now thinking about those two people who helped me help myself. Paul Robinson's book was practically my Bible when I had to dose myself out of a reverse T3 problem. I had to get my T3 from other countries. No doctor would give it to me. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to have a heart attack. All of these false fears around T3, just absolutely insane. Um, and, and, and so that, that was just lucky that he had just written the book. I mean, had it been a few years prior, I don't know that anyone would have even known what reverse T3 is. And Janie Bolthorpe's just always so on top of it over the years that like, thank God she recommended that to me. So what does it feel? It's just severe hypothyroidism. So you can be on thyroid hormone worse. medication and be hypothyroid, meaning not enough, right? You can be on a lower dose and you're like, I still have symptoms. And you're like, well, you're probably not on enough of it. And then also you can have reverse T3 hypothyroidism, even if you're on thyroid hormone, because again, the T4 in my armor thyroid, my natural desiccated thyroid was over converting into reverse T3. And I didn't know it. My reverse T3 was 30. 
Uh, I was a disaster. I, again, all the symptoms, I gained another 20 pounds again. I cracked skin, you know, adrenal fatigue, like every single thing came back. So I basically had two horrible bouts of hypothyroidism, one being a reverse T3 problem in my thirties, about seven years of my thirties was just shot. And you can imagine I had already fixed myself with NDT. So when this came up, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And then again, went to the doctor and she threw up her hands at me. I went to the doctor at the time and I thought, got it. I thought she got it because she knew NDT and she knew the stuff. And I thought, okay, great. Oh, finally, oh, found a doctor. I'm fixed. I'm good. I'm not hypo anymore. Thank God that's over. Then this happens. I gained so much weight that my bra looks like a Playboy bunny triangle nipple cover, you know, like tiny bikini. My bra looked like that. And I stood in front of her. I took off my clothes in the office and I stood in front of her. I go, look at me. I can't think. I got acne. My hair is falling. Da, da, da. And I said, look, this is the problem. Here's my labs. I have a reverse T3 problem. I know how to treat it. And she threw up her hands and she goes, oh, this is too complicated. And you know, and, and, and you know what? There's someone out there crying right now hearing that. And I'll tell you why, because that is just, I went into the parking lot and I just bawled my eyes out because I realized that the second time in a decade, I was left in the dust by myself to have to go solve this. And I said to her at the time, I said, so the MCATs weren't fucking difficult. Like organic chemistry tests wasn't complicated. Mm. Fucking medical school, excuse my language, wasn't complicated, but this is? Mm. She didn't try to look to help me. She didn't look, completely left in the dust. And I, I cried in that parking lot and I thought, oh my God, I'm on my own again. And now I'm on my own with something that almost no doctor understands holy shit like you know what i mean i look i was ordering my medication from mexico for the longest time because i didn't have a doctor up until i wrote my book i really i was my own doctor especially after the reverse t3 problem and there was a shortage of it in mexico and listen thyroid patients like me were having meltdowns all over the world because that was where we were getting it from i got ripped off and i, I mean i had to buy this i was just so terrible that i just couldn't find a us doctor who was willing to give me the thing that i needed so i basically doctored myself out of two horrible thyroid problems but glad i did because i had to learn it all in order to help other people so you know it was a it's any, everything in my life that has seem, seemingly seemed negative and I've had a very blessed life, um, this was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Nice. So a couple, a couple last questions before mm -hmm. we adjourn here. So um, one of the things that I found, you were talking about, you know, the causes of hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's is that Bartonella, which is a Lyme type infection, mercury, yep. mold. I EBV. find that when I... Yeah, I find that when I remove those, that I'm able to wean people off of their thyroid medication. Has, has that been your experience as well? Mold can cause Hashimoto's. It, it caused Dave Asprey, is famously the bulletproof uh, coffee guy. He, he got Hashimoto's from from mold, and then it disappeared because he got rid of it, cleaned up the mold. Um, if you have a proclivity to Hashimoto's, gluten 100% ignites the antibodies. Just Right. It's just true. And for most autoimmune diseases. So that's a thing too. Sometimes people just like, you'll see someone's test, you see the TPO antibodies and they go, are you eating a lot of gluten? Like, are you? And they're like, ah, shit, I've been eating pizza. And you're like, okay. And then they cut it out. Like sometimes if you catch it quickly, dietary interventions can nip Hashimoto's in the bud. Really? Look, there are so many natural ways to solve this. That is, my point is not, hey, get on thyroid hormone. In fact, it's avoid it. Like, let's see if we can work it out. But if someone's been working for one, two years and eight months, I mean, here's, here's what happens. Someone's suffering for lots of years. They're going to uninformed doctors. They're like, oh, I want to do a detox. And you're like, why would you bother? You have a terrible body with a terrible baseline with nothing to support the detox. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So at some point, at a certain point, depending on how long the person is suffering, they almost have to go on thyroid hormone replacement, get fixed, get right. Now they're at a baseline, the temp's right, the da-da-da, oh, now they've lost some inflammation's down. Then you can go about correcting all of the things. Right. Then when all those things are corrected, then you go, now I'm going to try to get off thyroid hormone replacement. That's another thing that happens too. Um, also infections. I know someone that got Graves' disease, which is the autoimmune form of hyperthyroidism, overactive from a tooth infection. 
so yeah, I always ask people with Hashimoto's, do you live in a place with mold? Like what are, you know what I mean? Like what could have caused it? And, um, but again, some of it can be kept at bay. And then there's also another intervention that's called low dose naltrexone. And I'm sure you've heard about it, but low dose naltrexone is amazing for a lot of people. Some people it doesn't work with, but for a lot of people, it's amazing and it can reduce antibodies. And that could be a way to stave off thyroid hormone replacement and also solve Hashimoto's. But if it's gone on too long, um, there's a certain point, you know what I'm saying? Where it's, it's futile to be like, oh, I'm going to keep trying natural stuff. You're like, you've been suffering. You've been in a disease state for two years. Things are going wrong. And the cascade is about to come down on you. You got to get on the thyroid hormone, correct all the stuff. Yeah, they get off of it. But you can't even detox. You can't even like do this stuff if you're if you're completely hypothyroid. Now, some people have Hashimoto's antibodies and they could detox from mold because the rest of their labs are okay. But if you have Hashimoto's and you have like no T4 and no T3 and you're really suffering and then all the natural stuff doesn't work, you might have to go on thyroid hormone replacement for a minute there for not a minute, but you know, for a while and get up to par so that you can then detox and do these things. You know, for example, like you would never want to get pregnant while you're hypothyroid because you'll have a miscarriage. Why would you want to go through that? Do you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I always tell people too, like, if you can plan, get your thyroid tested before conceiving, if you can, like, and then you need to get it tested. And if you are also on thyroid hormone replacement, you need to probably even increase your medication during that pregnancy because the demands of the baby. But these are these are scary things because, um, you know, I had a, a success story that had several miscarriages and she was treated by an endocrinologist for over a decade. They only tested TSH and T4 for the entire 10 years. They never tested her for Hashimoto. She didn't even know she had it. She started to gain weight. She started to have issues. Da, da, da. Doctor blamed her for having a closet eating disorder. Uh, she had been like a tall, skinny woman who had like always been fit. And she was like, yeah, not done a closet eating disorder. And um, she had two miscarriages. And when she found out that essentially they were probably prompted by an uninformed doctor, the day she learned she had Hashimoto's, the day she learned that the doctor was wrong in the tests and the stuff, she bawled her eyes off for an entire day and curled up in the ball. I mean, you can imagine. You have to go through two miscarriages. And then by the time she finds this out, it was a little bit too late in life for her to have it. This happens to a lot of people. Um, another woman on my course, Barbara, she had her uterus removed unnecessarily. By the way, one of the most unnecessarily and overdone procedures. Like, oh, problem with the woman's uterus, just take it out. It's like, hold on to these things, ladies, <laughs> if you can. And also, she didn't need that to happen, and she did want kids. I mean, I have heard the story so many times. I've known people with thyroid glands that were removed that didn't need to be removed. So... I mean, look, when I was misdiagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was hypothyroid, I don't have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had hypothyroidism-induced polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you looked at the ultrasound, you would have diagnosed me with PCOS. It was clear. But the question was, why? Mm -hmm. Why does this healthy 30-year-old with never a gynecological issue, normal, what I, why? And so that doctor was just ready to put me on metformin or whatever it was at the time they're doing. Is that what they're still doing? Something yeah. was, I don't know what it was, but it was something like that. And again, when I look back on that, I think, oh my God, you know, like how many more fibroids or polyps or whatever would have developed if I didn't catch the thyroid problem? And then would he have taken my uterus? Like, would they just, again, like, oh, we don't know what to do. You got a bunch of fibroids, see you right. later. So a lot of people too, you know, they'll get diagnosed with PCOS and they think I have PCOS. And I go, do you? I mean, I'm not saying you can't individually without a thyroid problem. I'm saying- right. Nah, I'm going to be suspicious. Let's test your thyroid because it causes stuff like this, hypothyroidism. Yeah, I think what you're saying, which I totally agree with, is the fact that everything works better in the human body when thyroid is optimized. It's the master gland and not because I said so. Um, and so when that's off, you get the cascade of problems, right? The skin, the hormone balance, and then that leads into something else. And now you got another problem, you know, and, and right. so, and like blood pressure, that's another thing. Or your doctor's like, oh my God, your lipid panel is terrible. Is it? Right. <laughs> because again, like when I was hypothyroid, my lipid panel was terrible too. Then I went on NDT. I got optimized. I'm doing great. My lipid panel was great. So you're going to have doctors unnecessarily, as they already do anyway, but in this case, they'll unnecessarily prescribe statins, blood pressure medication. This stuff is all related to thyroid. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, yeah, if there's anything else I can clear up, I know we've, we've, I know I've gotten, gotten a lot here, but. No, this is great. So where can people go and learn more about you? 
Uh, you can go to lrust.com. You know, look, I have a free hour and a half thyroid masterclass where I just kind of go through all of this. It comes with my free thyroid guide, which lists all the tests. It even lists like questions to ask a doctor on the phone to see if you want to waste your uh, copay on them. You know, like it's questions you could ask the nurse practitioner before you get in there. Like, hey, does the doctor prescribe this, that, and the other? And if they're like, no, he only prescribes Synthroid T4 only, you'd be like, click, right? So you go to the next. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has a wonderful audiobook of guided healing meditation in there as well. I know it was so, it's so lonely and it's so tough to go through this, mm -hmm. especially when like you feel like your doctors aren't helping you. And so I know I was helped by other people's guided meditations and thinking a little bit better about my body. Cause you know, when you're falling apart and your brain's not working and you're depressed every day, you look in the mirror and you're like, ah, and you know, there's nothing positive. You know, it, it's really, really tough. It's tough to be someone's friend. It's tough to be in a relationship. There are married couples that have come to me. You know, they're like, this isn't my wife. She's been to 1500 doctors. Now they think she's a hypochondriac. What's mm -hmm. happened to this woman I married? She's not, this happens all the time. It ruins relationships. It ruins careers. Um, Paul mm -hmm. Robinson, the guy I talked about who, who had that inability to convert based on the enzymes. He still to this day, you can tell he's a, very sad about the fact that because he was hypo all those years and didn't know what the hell, uh, you know, he lost a job. He couldn't be a great parent. You know, you're not best attitude, things like that. And I mean, it ruined the relationship with his children. I mean, he still yeah. to this day feels like you could tell he's kind of like blames thyroid for that. And I get it because it's a, it's a, it's a horrible thing. And so mm -hmm. um, anyway, freethyroidmasterclass.com. You can just go there hour and a half video of me talking about this stuff in depth, my free thyroid guide, guided healing medication. If you need to go deeper, I did, like you said, I have the most comprehensive thyroid course on the planet. <laughs> I do. It's 30 hours long. That's like a semester in college. It is uh, MD tutorials from Dr. Gary Forsman, who was on my book. He's an integrative functional medicine physician in practice for 30 years. It's other health experts and it's also me. And in that one, the reason why it's the most in-depth is I do go through lab examples, videos, everything. So if you really, really need to get into it and do this to figure it out, which I suggest you do, because if you have a thyroid problem and it's going to be a while, you're going to need that. Um, and you can just go to ultimatethyroidcourse.com. Awesome. Elle, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. I hope you learned something on today's podcast. If you did, please share it with your friends and family and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. It's really helpful for getting this information out to more people who desperately need it. Sharing all the experts I know and love and the powerful tips I have is one of my absolute favorite things to do. Thanks for being part of my community. Just a reminder, this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professional. It is provided with the understanding that it does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. Thanks for listening and have an amazing day.